Galileo Galilei was born on February 15, 1564, in Pisa, in the Duchy of Florence, Italy. He was the first of six children born to Vincenzo Galilei, a well-known musician and music theorist, and Giulia Amanati. In 1574, the family moved to Florence, where Galileo started his formal education at the Camaldolese Monastery in Vallombrosa. In 1583, Galileo entered the University of Pisa to study medicine. While at Pisa, Galileo was exposed to the Aristotelian view of the world, then the leading scientific authority and the only one sanctioned by the Roman Catholic Church. At first, Galileo supported this view, like any other intellectual of his time, and was on track to be a university professor. However, due to financial difficulties, Galileo left the university in 1585 before earning his degree. During this time, he began his two-decade study on objects in motion and published The Little Balance, describing the hydrostatic principles of weighing small quantities which brought him some fame. This gained him a teaching post at the University of Pisa in 1589. There, Galileo conducted his fabled experiments with falling objects and produced his manuscript, Du Motu, On Motion, a departure from Aristotelian views about motion and falling objects. Galileo developed an arrogance about his work, and his student criticisms of Aristotle left him isolated among his colleagues. In 1592, his contract at the University of Pisa was not renewed was the first to perceive a connection between planetary motion with motion on Earth. This revealed the importance of observation, as well as use of mathematics and physics. He was one of the first investigators of nature to approach his work in essentially the same way as a modern scientist. Galileo also proposed Galilean relativity, which states that the same definitions of motion are valid everywhere, and that the principles of terrestrial physics could explain phenomena in the heavens. One of the biggest approbations to Galileo from modern scientists lies in Galileo's foundation of the scientific method. He determined that only mathematical language could describe the underlying principles of nature, thus making the language of science become mathematic. One of the greatest works of Galileo was published in 1632. His book, Dialogue on the Two Great World Systems, served as one of the first books in science where lay people could read it with pleasure and more ease. Beforehand, most scientific documents were written in Latin, but Galileo attempted to reach a larger crowd by using Italian. This book was about three men arguing over geocentric and heliocentric universes. One man was arguing for heliocentric, one arguing for geocentric, and one who was neutral. The book was heavily biased to the heliocentric man because it has the geocentric man tripping over his ar own arguments and looking like an idiot. He admitted, however, that some of his discoveries could only be explained by the fact that the Earth is moving, and became a firm advocate of Copernicus' theory of a heliocentric system, which the Church considered to be heresy. Galileo stated to letter to Kepler. Like you, I accepted the Copernican position several years ago, and discovered from thence the causes of many natural effects, which are doubtless inexplicable by the current theories. I have written up many of my reasons and refutations on the subject, but I have not dared until now to bring them into the open. Being warned by the fortunes of Copernican himself, our master, who procured immortal fame among a few, but stepped down among the great crowd, for the foolish are numerous, only to be derided and dishonored. I would dare publish my thoughts if there were many like you, but since there are not, I shall forbear. It was in such an uproar because the Bible contradicted the fact that the earth is moving. The story of Joshua states that the sun had stopped, which hinted the belief of a geocentric universe, to find Galileo's findings. The church debated this heretic in fierce arguments for years. He also discovered that Jupiter had s satellites and the moon has mountains. This was a fundamental blow to traditional beliefs that say that the earth is changing and imperfect, while the heavens were immutable and unblemished. After his experiment, however, it seemed that the other planets had satellites as well as Earth, 
and also had rough surfaces. Once again, the church found Galileo. Galileo and the church were becoming fast enemies since the church was also fighting Protestantism and worked its hardest to maintain power by clearing views that questioned the church as Gal Galileo had done, making Galileo a potentially threatening enemy. Galileo could not simply resist questioning the Catholic authority. He states, there were those who impudently asserted that this degree had its origin not in Jewish inquire, but in passion none too well informed. Complaints were to be heard that advisors who were totally unskilled at astronomical observations ought not to clip the wings of reflective intellects by means of brass pro rash prohibitions. Upon hearing such carpet insolence, my zeal could not Eventually be ended up being subjected to the Inquisition. The Inquisition almost caused Galileo to be excommunicated and faced house arrest for the rest of his life when he was forced to abjure his views as heresy and error. However, he wrote letters ridiculing his opponents and even published a book in Holland on principles of physics called the Two New Sciences. Overall, Galileo was most definitely one of the greatest contributors to science of all time, and some of his work is still largely printed today. While he may be famous for his prominent improvement of the telescope, Galileo's main credit not only belongs to his work, but his dedication in itself. Facing with the Inquisition, many scientists would buckle, but under Galileo, so like a rock. Let us not only gather the knowledge of his formidable Galileo, but the courage to withstand challenges with fierce faith and intensity as well.